This question is so freaking easy if you arithmetize. Now, how would I know to arithmetize? Well, they're asking for the value of A. So I can't make up a random value for A. That's the thing I'm trying to find. But the only way to find A when we have an equation with uh, basically two variables is if the other variable doesn't matter. The other variable somehow disappears. So that's a clue. We can probably make it whatever we want. It's going to be a carry through. Even though we don't have answer choices here, I still see a very clear opportunity to make x equal zero. Plus, if you weren't sure if that was going to work, just try it. Because if it fails, it fails quickly. This is the benefit of zero is it's really, really easy to do, right? So what's going to happen? This goes away. This goes away. We're left with 1.17. That expression can be written as this other thing, meaning it equals this other thing. And that's going to be A, which we need to find, times this other thing. But again, if X is zero, this goes away and this goes away. So it's really A times 13. So what do we do to solve this question? All you got to do is divide both sides by 13. So let's just put it in the calculator. We have 1.17 divided by 13, 0 0.09, 0 0.09. And that's the answer. This is a hard question. This would be like middle to end of a section. And yet it took us 20 seconds. If I hadn't been talking you through it, it would have taken 20 seconds if you did the arithmetize. Yes, there are ways to maybe get this right by thinking about the factoring, but you got those decimals. So you got to deal with that. And a lot of you might try to multiply by 100 or something to try to make those decimals go away. But then you've got to remember to pull that 100 back out when you solve for A. So that's an easy mistake to make because 9 feels like a much better answer than 0 0.09. But you know, it's not the answer. I don't know what to tell you. So I don't have to worry about any of those things because when I picked a zero, it all worked itself out. Now, if you want, if you don't believe that this strategy works, pick another number. You can pick X equals one. You can pick X equals 206 if you want. It doesn't matter. It will still work out because again, these are equivalent expressions. So if X is something, it's something for both sides of the equation. That's the whole point of an equivalent expression is their equivalent no matter what the value of the variable is. So the only thing we gotta find is A. That is, they say it here, A is a constant. That often means that it, we can also arithmetize, but in this case, since they asked for the value of A, we have to recognize A is what we're solving for. So we did do a little algebra, but X is irrelevant. So put a number in that's easy, see what happens. And even if zero had failed here, it would have failed very, very quickly. So worth the time, worth the effort to try. And that's, I think, what I want you to take away is if you're not sure if arithmetize is going to work, you have to default to just trying it as you practice because you will learn those cases where it works and doesn't by doing it and letting it fail occasionally. That's part of the process of learning.